my buddy Mike gave me um, a Dead Kidneys record, Plastic Surgery Disasters, with the, <laughs> you know, like crazy intense cover and the booklet. And, um, and I was hooked because it was like powerful music, but it was intelligent and the lyrics weren't just about like, um, you know, cheesy stuff that metal bands sing about. I started to buy singles and albums and I got the first Clash album and I put it on and as soon as the chords started for the first song on the first side we had an earthquake. That was another moment where I was like, oh my god, it's a sign. I was already such a kind of disillusioned, uh, angst-ridden adolescent that um, when I heard punk it just resonated that there was a voice to the dissatisfaction that I felt. I never really felt like I totally fit into what society was, and I immediately identified with the whole scene. Um, and I loved it from the minute I heard it. It was totally fringe, and it was totally, uh, it was actually dangerous. Like there was violence and there was, um, you know, there was risk in being a punk. I liked it, man, because it was like, you know, fuck you and, and it was like I was struggling to be like a, a normal dude but the call of the wild was too strong. Once I got into punk rock and, and reading and, and sort of looking into alternative lifestyles and ideas I was introduced to William Burroughs, of course Sid Vicious. All, all the people that I looked up to and held in any type of esteem were like junkies, fucked up like beat writers, uh, like alcoholic, coked out fucking musicians, like just just completely fucked up messes. When I was a little kid, my hero was Spider-Man, but when I got introduced to punk rock and um, the insanity of it, my heroes became uh, junkies and criminals. It was insanity, it was like sheer insanity. Like you would get wasted, you'd go to the club, there were so many shows that were amazing that I went to and don't remember. And we would drink, and we would drink and drink and drink and get drunk. We drank to get drunk. It was a social thing. That's how it started at the beginning. Yeah. I know it doesn't start like that for everybody, but for me, that's definitely yeah. how it started. Oh. And so at first it was really exciting, but then very quickly you just smashed, fucked, and strung out and hopeless. It progressed. It got. It progressed into like snorting it to then trying needles and like it got gnarly. Never said no to anything, and I loved everything. I kind of loved every drug I ever did, and um, and you know, I guess what happened is just that it stops feeling good and it starts making you sick. And if you are an alcoholic, you just keep doing it anyway. There was a period at like 16, 17 years old where I like had sold my prized punk rock leather jacket and my docs for drugs. And, and there was like a punk show happening and I was too busy smoking crack. I wasn't even going to punk shows anymore. I, I was like, you know, I, I still was a punk rocker, but I wasn't like really supporting the scene. I was so resigned to the fact that like I was gonna die alone and miserable in a gutter somewhere. You're gonna fucking die like, like the other guy and the other guy and the other guy the other guy that you knew that fucking died. And I'm just like, you know, alcohol, fuck you. Drugs, fuck you. I need help. And I fucking surrendered, man, finally, dude. Where would you be if you were clean? Who knows, dude? I'm a stubborn, hard-headed son of a bitch. Um, but I guess I got desperate enough to be able to uh, ask for help. I used to think that, like, if I stopped partying, that I would lose my identity. I was afraid I'd lose my creativity. I was afraid that um, I would be judged you know, because I didn't get loaded anymore. I was so fucking bummed, dude, when I got sober that, like, I was just gonna turn into, like, this lame-ass, like, fucking square, suit and tie wearing, fucking no fun having, sad face dickhead. Self-destruction isn't rebellion, you know what I mean? 
you know, being, being obsessed with something that's not freedom. Recovery is not about getting comfortable. That's about getting real. And that's exactly what punk is about. It's not about getting comfortable. It's about being real. If you can't be happy for what you have, be glad you didn't get what you deserved. So I'm extremely grateful I didn't get what I deserved um, because I certainly don't deserve to be here. I'm grateful that this morning when I woke up, it wasn't in San Quentin. I'm grateful that like on good days, I still have enough money to pay rent and buy fireworks and pornography. I'm grateful I found punk rock, to be honest. I could turn something horrible and horrific and traumatic, such as my father's suicide. I'm grateful that I, that I could use that as the motivation to, to say I'm not gonna drink anymore. What is punk rock and how does it apply to my life today? Like, I'm still a punk rocker in the same way I was in the summer of 1978. Like, I don't think, um, I don't think I've changed at all. I've grown. Like, uh, there are a lot more words in my emotional language now besides I don't care and fuck you. Because I do care. And sometimes fuck you is the appropriate thing to say, and sometimes I love you is the appropriate thing to say.